Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Derek here. We are back reacting to another episode of The Mandalorian. Hooray. <laughs> um, what happened last time on The Mandalorian? Last time was called The Tragedy. Uh, and for very good reason. The Razor Crest blew up. That's the only bad thing that happened. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, much more awful things happened. Uh, so we start out on last episode with Baby Yoda, Grogu, and... Uh, Papa Din Djarin, just chilling in the ship, you know, he's saying his name, chuckling, and it's like this nice father-kid bonding moment, and you're like, okay, and then it shows the tragedy, and you're like, oh, why would you play with my emotions like that? <laughs> um, but Mando and Grogu land on uh, Tython, like, right away. I was thinking maybe it would be something that would take them the whole episode to get there, or maybe end of the season. No, they get there right away. Um, Grogu starts doing his, like, meditation thing, uh, <laughs> on the thing, on the seeing stone, and it's, it's lighting up, it's going crazy, uh, and then in comes Slave One, Boba Fett's ship, you're like, why are you here? <laughs> uh, turns out he's tracking Mando, because he wants his armor back, and you're like, okay, well, cool, you can have it, um, and then a bunch of stormtroopers show up, and Mando, and... Uh, uh, what's her name? Oh, Fennec Shan. Uh, Mando and Fennec Shan and Boba are just destroying these guys. Um, and it's, it's crazy. And then Boba Fett decides to look at that ship and he's like, dude, I'm getting my freaking armor back. And when everyone's surrounded, he shows up in his armor, capping people, knee rockets everywhere it's like it's insane he rocket launches two ships out of the sky and you're like this is the coolest boba fett has ever been literally this is the coolest thing boba fett has ever done in his entire life <laughs> um and it was incredible and just when everyone's like celebrating like yeah we did it laser bolt from the sky just decimates the razor crest it's like no nah! That was that was the most heartbreaking thing because you know, you know at some point Mando's gonna get Baby Yoda back. So that wasn't like super heartbreaking or anything. But the ship blowing up after all the work that we <laughs> have put into this, all the emotional work that we've put into that ship. Come on now, uh, that was heartbreaking. And then uh, Moff Gideon sends in these like Transformer robot droids uh the the dark troopers and they steal baby yoda and they leave and it's like the most heartbreaking thing and even still when baby yoda's force choking stormtroopers in his cell because he's leveled up you're like dude mando's gonna be so mad <laughs> uh, but no now uh boba fett and uh Fennec Shan are like teaming up with Mando and he's also going to go get um, uh, Mayfield, uh, Bill Burr, and he's going to get some other people and it's just going to be this barrage of salt on them and it's going to be incredible. Um, what else? Oh, Star Wars had their, um, or not Star Wars, Disney had their investor day and we got confirmation of so much. Oh my God. There's a confirmed Ahsoka spinoff series happening. Um, there's a Rogue Squadron movie, uh, there's, like, a Rebel, uh, pilot, uh, show happening, like, ugh. Hayden Christensen's coming back for Obi-Wan, oh, <laughs> yes, the king has returned, <laughs> um, so many things are happening, they announced, like, 50 trillion different things for Star Wars and Marvel, and I'm psyched out of my mind, it is good to be a nerd. <laughs> um, anyway, back to this episode. Before we jump in, please consider leaving a like on the video. That means a ton. If you want to see more, please subscribe, comment below. Anything you want to do, you know, helps the algorithm see my videos. So, you know, whatever. Uh, if you want to see the full-length reaction in this episode, head down to my Patreon. It's linked in the description. Um, but otherwise, I've been talking way too much, and you're probably annoyed, so let's jump into the video. <laughs> and jump into the episode, rather.
That looks like a uh, prison ship. Looks like a, one of the prison ships from Rogue One, actually. Wait, isn't this the planet from Rogue One? Isn't this uh, where, um, frick, what's her name? She was being held at the beginning. Inmate 34667, descend and receive new instructions. He's like, screw this. <laughs> Please salute Marshal Dune. Man, prisoner number three four six six seven to my custody. Affirmative. He's like, what? Please follow Marshal Dune to transport. Inmate three four six. He's like, what is happening? Please follow Marshal Dune. Where is she taking me? Inmate three four six six seven. He he thinks he's gonna die. He doesn't want to go. I don't think that's so hard to ask, do you? Oh, his armor looks shiny and new. Oh, oh, Boba Fett! God damn! Oh my goodness, he looks way better than last episode. <laughs> oh, jeez, man. Yo, I can't get over how good Boba looks. He got a shiny new spiff up in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> How long has it been? Is that the only thing he's been doing? Is just like, like polishing and repainting his armor? The Believer. Ooh. Okay, that's dope. I've always been slightly curious about the orientation of Slave One. But it rotates. That's honestly really cool. You guys get him back. You guys let me go. Uh, maybe, not maybe is. knock a few years off your you sentence. For me. You get a better view. Punching the coordinates to Morak. Copy that. He looks so good. <laughs> God damn. Bubba with the level up, baby. Yeah, it's the. Uh, Let's just say they might recognize my face. Great, so it's me going in alone. <laughs> no way. I'll go. Hey, buddy, I might be good at fast talking, but I don't think I can explain the way a guy... Is he going to take his helmet off? Guards. So unless you're going to take off that helmet, it's going to be me going in alone. Or say goodbye to your little green friend. He's taking off his helmet. You're not going alone. Dude. I'm coming with you. Dude, no way. I won't be showing my face. Oh, I was like... <sighs> Are we going to see Pedro? <laughs> What's he going to... Oh, he's going to cover his face with one of those helmets? Yeah! Cara Doom! Do work, girl. Oh my god, this guy reeked. His gloves are still wet. <laughs> That's so funny. What would they say on Mandalore? You know, it's a shame you're not. <laughs> it's never been, so this. he wouldn't know. You got such a sunny disposition. I can't imagine how much fun you are in one of these. <laughs> I love Bill Burr. Those better ones off. Yo, take it off, Mando. Just do it. <laughs> Listen to Bill Burr. He knows what he's talking about. Take out that gross, sweaty Imperial helmet. Thinking it's a young version of him. Yeah, Empire, New Republic. It's all the same to these people. Invaders on their land is all we are. <laughs> true, true. When it comes to the little people, it doesn't really matter who's in charge. Uh, seems to me like your rules start to change a little bit. get desperate. I mean, look at you. You said you couldn't take your helmet off, and now you got a stormtrooper one on. So what's the rule? Is it that you can't take off your Mando helmet, or you can't show your face? 
Yeah. He's being confronted with his uh, his rules and ideals. Everybody's got their lines. As far as I'm concerned, you can make it through your day and still sleep at night. You're doing better than most. Ooh. Someone attacked him. Okay, okay, I think we're good. You should go close that thing that he opened. Does that thing have ammo? That was like a, a Casino Royale move. <laughs> and the gun runs up. <laughs> oh, the crunch right there. Oh yeah, he can't he can't fight the same way. Uh, Cause this Imperial armor is poopy. <laughs> oh, he's he's still so good, but he can't fight the same way. He's used to just like tanking shots. Oh, one of these guys is gonna tear his helmet off. He's gonna have to just accept that the helmet's coming off. Oof. Oh. Maybe the helmet's not coming off. Mando it does work, son. Slave one. Oh. TIE Fighters, not Slave one. Yo, bro, that's hecka dangerous. Well, God bless the Empire. <laughs> Just kidding, but uh they uh, they came in clutch right there. <laughs> They're just regular people. As much as they are like part of the Empire, right here they just seem... This is similar to any uh, scene with the Rebellion, when they do something cool. Some of those guys were saluting with their left hand and some with their right. Is there a... A difference for the stormtroopers or anything? In order to access the network, terminal has to scan your face. Let's go. Give it to me. You gotta do it, Mando. Oh, he did it. And he looks so good. Interesting that they just have to scan his face. Like, it's not checking him for security clearance or anything. It's just like making note of who did it. What's your TK number? Th three. My TK number is? This is my commanding officer, TK-593, sir. I'm Imperial Combat Assault Transport Lieutenant TK-111, sir. Uh, I'm afraid you're gonna have to speak up to him a little bit. Let's get a drink. It's kind of crazy seeing Pedro without his helmet on. I mean, like, I've seen him in so many other things, but it's just like, like, dang, dude. A toast to Operation Cinder. Hey, that's from, uh, now there's a man who that's from, um, Battlefront 2, right? Entire city gone in moments, along with everybody in it. We lost our whole division that day. Man, that was like five, ten thousand people. Yeah. That's a lot. Frick. The ones who died? Did they have to die? Was it good for them? Hmm? Their families? The guys I served with? Civilians, those poor mud scuffers, died defending their homes, fighting for freedom. <sighs> was it good for them? 
A little mini commentary on war right here. That guy's like, what? He's <laughs> gonna kill everybody here. Everybody gotta die. I never saw your face. Damn right. I never saw your face. He's an Imperial sharpshooter, so he's actually like dang good. I hope Mayfeld doesn't die. I like him a lot. I think he is genuinely a good dude. You know, he's he's committed a few crimes here and there, but uh, I think for the most part, he, uh, like he said earlier, if he can, if you can sleep at night, you're doing better than most. Yes! He made it! No, don't, don't stand out there. Oh! What a shot, dude! Good thing Mando didn't close that. He's a good dad. He's a good dude. Maybe they will let him go. Or he'll just officially join the team. Is he as good of a pilot as he is just a regular guy? Okay, that was smart. Woo! Damn. That was sick. Officer, take your gun. That was some nice shooting back there. Oh, you saw that? Yeah, that uh, that wasn't uh, part of the plan. Just get some stuff off the chest. Let him free. Looks to me like prisoner number three four six six seven died in the refinery explosion on Laura. Does that mean I can go? Well, you should join the team, actually, but, yeah. Is this the planet you want to chill on? Moth Gideon, you have something I want. You may think you have some idea what you are in possession of. <laughs> no, dude. But you do not. Soon, you will be back with me. He means more to me than you will ever know. Than you will ever know. You're goddamn right, Mando. <laughs> yes. Hell of a way to end the episode. Take his own words, throw them back in his face. You're gonna die. <laughs> Woo. I'm a little sweaty right now. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Oh. This show's so good. This show's so freaking good. God dang. Gina Carano, baby. Bill Burr, Tamara Morrison. Who is that one guy? Ming-Na Wen. Giancarlo Esposito. Oh, it's not going to show the, the name of... Uh, the guy he shoots, he's been in other stuff. He was in, um, he's in the first Kingsman movie. Uh, I remember that. He's been in some other stuff. He usually plays 
like a bad dude or a bad looking dude. Um, either way, <laughs> this episode was so good. This show is so, so good. Like this is, if you don't like Mandalorian, I don't know what you're doing with your time, bruh. Like even, like even the episodes that don't directly like, like make tangible, like, okay, we completed the quest type things. It's like, like some people might consider this episode to be a, a filler. They're dead wrong. They're so super wrong. You know, it is, it is like a little side jut to, to get the thing that he needs to do to, to complete the main quest. Like he's constantly having to do that. But in real life, like a lot of times stuff isn't just like A to B. Like, so it, it makes sense, but holy crap. Oh, this, this was so good. So freaking good. Uh, I love Bill Burr. So we start off, uh, on the, on the prison planet. Uh, this is, um, Frick, what is her name? I can't remember her name. It starts with a J. Um, uh, from Rogue One. This is like the prison planet she starts out on, but it, at the time it's, it's an Imperial prison planet. Um, uh, and <laughs> they stroll up and they're like, hey, uh, we're leaving. <laughs> and he's, he's so confused. He's like, where am I going? He thinks he's about to be killed or something. And then freaking Boba Fett walks out just looking dang spiffy. Like, whew, what has he been doing? <laughs> you know, since he got his armor back, he's like, all right, I'm just going to spend some tender, loving care, paint this thing up. Looking fresh now. Like, oh, he looks better than he has ever looked. Like, he's got brand new spanking armor. Holy balls, man. Just looks so good. Um, <laughs> they're essentially like, all right, Mayfeld, you're an Imperial, so you're going to help us out real quick to get my kid back. And he's like, so I get to go free? And they're like, no, no, not at all. Not at all. You'll get a better view. Uh, and it, in the end, he does get a better view. <laughs> um, but their plan, so they have to infiltrate this refinery because there's a, uh, uh, computer, I'll just call it a computer. Is there's an Imperial computer desk thing there and you know maybe there isn't those other places because this is like a secret place this is a secret base um so maybe that's why there's only one here and not well there might be more he just knows about one here um and so there they have to get in they take some armor uh some imperial armor <laughs> and bill burst like yeah his gloves are all sweaty this is disgusting <laughs> He's just, the whole time he's talking mad trash to Mando. He's like, you know, it feels better without the mask on. Uh, which I think I like that, that Mando throughout the entire season, whether it be specifically the mask wearing thing or, or other things, he's being directly confronted with the fact that maybe the things he's believed and grown up on aren't always what's right or what's needed in the situation. And uh you know like and even like this side versus that side isn't necessarily always how things boil down um they pass these villagers that are just they're grounding just like in the dirt and he he tells mando he's like you know to these everyday villagers like it doesn't matter if it's imperial if it's republic like whoever's in charge these people's life doesn't change like someone is always ruling someone um, and that's so true. Um, and, and we figure out, uh, you know, that plays in a little bit to how he feels about the whole conflict in general, why he is no longer an Imperial sharpshooter. Like, you never really, a lot of times you don't, they don't tell you why these people left the group they're in. They just said he was a former Imperial sharpshooter. Um, so he's, he's still so good with the skills, but the reason he left, we learn later. Um, but yeah, so they have to drive a certain speed to, to, you know, not have their stuff blow up. And this whole caravan of like native people are just like, you know, they're not doing a bad thing <laughs> for them. They're, they're trying to, you know, disrupt the empire's supply chain. So 
in general, they're doing a good thing, but because Mando's pretending to be Imperial, he has to fight them and kill them. <laughs> um, and, you know, they to a certain point, it's self-defense, but he has to slightly fight different because he, he tanks the first few shots from this guy's staff and it just destroys his armor because uh, it's not Beskar steel. Uh, so he, he has to, like... He has to already be making some sacrifices to his fighting style, but he's he's still good at fighting. And he's just taking everybody out uh, until the Tie Fighters come in. I early in the episode, I was like, "Dude, you should probably close that that thing, otherwise it's gonna blow up." Good thing he didn't close it because Mayfelds is a dang sharpshooter. Uh, they get there though, and it's everyone's just like, "Yeah, you did it." And it's like, that's, that particular scene was very similar to, you know, plenty of other scenes you've seen in, um, like, from the opposite side of, of, like, the Rebels, where, you know, they destroyed some uh, Empire base or, or one in a dogfight and they land and everyone's like, yay, you did it. Like, it just shows that no matter which side they're on, like, there's, the people there are just, like, they're psyched, they're happy that people on their side are doing well um but they see the the computer and mayfeld doesn't want to do it because uh his superior former superior officer that he hates is there and he probably doesn't want to screw up screw up uh or have this guy notice him so he's like mando you got to do it or like we're not doing it because you got to scan your face and then mando straight up does he takes his helmet off Pedro Pascal in all his glory. He looks so good. He looks way better than he did um, in the finale or whatever of uh, last season. Because, um, well, he was hurt that time. But, like, he looks... Pedro looks fresh in this episode. And he has it off for an extended period of time. Uh, this superior guy, you know, has him sit down for drinks. And he's like, yeah, all hail glory to the Empire. You guys are great. And... Mayfeld, he there's a reason he left the Empire, and he's like, yeah, uh, we were on. They mentioned he mentions Operation Cinder, which is um, I think pulled directly from Star Wars Battlefront Two, the new one. Um, that's like the that was the Emperor's plan to just like if he died, his his uh his plan was to just destroy all these planets. Like he had things set up to just nuke these planets, essentially. Um, and the campaign of, of that game is trying to, like, deal with that and stop that. And uh, it, interestingly enough, the campaign of that game is you are an Imperial special agent, um, like, seeing this play out and then switching to the good side. So it's a nice little parallel there. Um, but, yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, we, uh, we killed 10,000 of our own people. Uh, like, you made that decision to kill 10,000 of our own people? Like, I'm sure that was that was great. He's like, yeah, it was a tough decision. He's like, yeah, really? <laughs> like he's one of the only people to make it out. Um, and he's just, he's pissed off. Cause he's like, dude, how is this good for those families? Like, how is this good for how those guys are dead now? Their families are grieving. Like the native people that were just fighting for their freedom, you annihilated them. How is that good for them? And <laughs> Mando's looking at him like, dude, shut up <laughs> like i agree with you but we're gonna get killed uh and eventually mayfeld he just has enough he's like Poof! shoots the guy right in the chest i like the decision <laughs> and then the other imperial guy comes in he's like uh <laughs> just stares at him like oh shit <laughs> they just shot that guy and then they start capping everybody. I thought Mayfeld was not going to make it, honestly. I was concerned that he was going to get um that he was going to get shot, but he makes it. He makes it out and he's real good at shooting. They're like he's taking people out left and right. Uh Slave 1 drops in and he's like he's like, "Here, let me see that. Let me see that sniper real quick." And then the door that they left open on the transport just pinpoint shoots it, blows everything up. And he's like, "You're damn right." Oh, Mayfeld's so cool. Him and him and Boba Fett and Mando just shined this episode. You know, Cara Dune and and and, uh, and uh, Ming Na Wen did great as well. But freaking a, dude. And then they're like, "Damn, such a bummer that he died, right?" <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, that sucks. 
unfortunate, man, but uh, it is what it is. And he's like, straight up, I can leave. <laughs> I would have been like, if I were him, I would have been like, can I, can you maybe drop me off at a, a, a different planet, possibly? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if he wants to chill at this planet, because, you know, when they started, they were like, there's nothing there. Except just, I guess it's just a beautiful wood planet, uh, wooded planet with lots of natives. Maybe he's going to go hang out with the natives. Hopefully, we'll that means we'll see him again, maybe next season. Um, he can be a reoccurring character that just uh, joins Mando every once in a while, which I like that. I like that they just bring characters in and out like they're not always with them um i for, i love bill burr so much he's like he's a funny dude but like him, him talking about how he came to be a part of this he was uh he was never the biggest star wars fan um and then he he did i think he did a uh john favreau's cooking show with him uh and uh john favreau was like hey man you want to be part of star wars He's like, all right, cool. Well, sure, whatever. I'll do it. And then shows up and he's like, this is incredible. Now he loves Star Wars. Uh, like he just loves being a part of it now. Um, and that's so, that's so cool. I love that they let him go. I, I wished he could have like stayed part of the team. That would have been awesome because I, I love Bill Burr a lot. Um, but they let him go. Uh, and then the episode ends with Mando sending a message to Moff Gideon and it's just his own words from last season where he's like, you may think you know what you have, but that means more to me than you will ever know. And I was, I was just like, yes, Mando, throw his words in his face. <laughs> like just so good, so freaking good. I loved it. This episode was fantastic. Next episode, I think they might get Baby Yoda back. Not sure, though. I know season three is confirmed. I think they've confirmed Moff Gideon lives um, through season two, because I think they there was casting stuff that came out about Giancarlo Esposito being around for season three. Um, I, 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 I like that, uh, that Mando's taking his helmet off more. I think part of that is Pedro Pascal wanted to be able to be there more like a lot of season one was just him doing like voice stuff um and it, a lot of time he wasn't actually in the suit or on set um this time like he's definitely been in the suit more and he's gotten an opportunity to show his face now i like that a lot season three i think he's gonna be a lot more comfortable taking his helmet off um you know he's he already did it was willing to do it for an extended period of time you know, like Mayfeld said, like your ideals shift and change when you get desperate. Like, what are the rules here, man? Um, and I, I like that. I like that he's becoming a more well-rounded person. Um, I, I wonder, uh, are we going to see Bo-Katan next episode? Um, or is she going to be more of a season three, like a bigger presence in season three because she wants the Darksaber back? Like, because that's still a big thing. She has to get the Darksaber back. Um you know, are we going to successfully get baby Yoda back this episode? Or is, are we going to fail to get him back? Um, are we going to fail to get him back at the end of the season? And, you know, season three is going to be him like surviving this Imperial lifestyle, maybe like slightly turning to the dark side and having to be redeemed and brought back to the light side. That would be pretty cool. Um, I kind of don't want to see baby Yoda go to the dark side even slightly. Um, cause there's just something so wholesome and precious about him. But I think possibly like just showing Grogu as like this sweet, innocent thing might get stale after a little bit. They do a really good job of, of making it not that way, but either way, I'm so excited for next episode. I'm super pumped. Um, I don't know if Bo-Katan will show up next episode, possibly. Um, I think next episode might just be a conflict. You know, she might not even fight Moff Gideon. It's, it's, it's entirely possible that it's just Mando fights him with his new Beskar steel and, you know, takes him out. And, you know, he lives but and becomes like a larger presence going forward. But 
I don't know, man. Anything can happen. This show is so good. I love Star Wars. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode down below. What do you think of Bill Burr's character uh, and the decisions they made with him this episode? What do you think of like the commentary of what he was saying? I agree with a lot of it. I think it's you know p pretty profound, honestly, uh, and pretty pretty straight to the heart of of how war can affect things, uh, and you know whether that be the people in it or the people that are touched by it. Um, what do you think of Mando taking his helmet off? Uh, what, what do you think of Boba's fresh armor? God dang, man. He looked real good. Um, yeah, yeah. What do you think is going to happen next episode? Let me know down below. Uh, leave, leave some comments. Uh, if you liked what you saw, whether it be my reaction or the show in general, consider leaving a like on the video. It means a ton. Comment means a ton. You know, helps the algorithm. Helps my videos get seen more. It means a lot to me. Uh, if you want to see more... Uh, of my reactions for The Mandalorian, like the season finale next week, please subscribe. If you want to see other reactions from me, subscribe. If you want to see the full-length reaction to this episode, head down to my Patreon linked below. I usually have the episodes up within a week if I can get it. You know, sometimes life takes over and it's a little delayed, but uh, I do my best to get those up. Um, other than that, I think that's all I got to say. I will catch you guys next time. Thanks for being here. Peace.